five months. Five months since I finished what we call residency. It's crazy, time flies. You blink and it's over just like that. I feel like I started residency just yesterday and residency just finished about a week or so later. But I assure you, when I was in residency, <laughs> it was not that fast. Um, it's just towards the end, it just seems like time flies a lot. And right now time has flown by. Um, in this video, we're gonna talk about what happens after residency, what happened for me after residency in terms of money and in terms of stress. If you're interested, stick along. Otherwise, I have some other great videos that you can watch. I have videos on virtual interviews, videos on personal statements, videos on um, just life of being a doctor. And if you have any other requests and videos, just put them down in the comments below. And of course, before we even go on, one of the most important things that need to happen to any doctor, especially to me, is that you take your finger, okay? And then you go down, look below the video. There's a thumbs up button. Just hit that thumbs up button. Make it turn blue, okay? And then I also want you to hit the subscription button if you haven't subscribed yet and hit the notification bell so that anytime I release a video, you'll be one of the first people to know. Anyway, all that said, my name is Dr. Safwa Sante. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the successful IMG, successful because I matched, and I'm here so that you can as well. Five whole months, where has time gone? It's incredible. It's really incredible. I feel like I was just in residency yesterday. For those of you that don't know, residency happens after medical school. It's a place where you apply the things that you learned in medical school under supervision. This way you can practice medicine in a way that's helpful without hurting the patient. In terms of stress, when I was in residency, I felt that the time that I was most stressed was probably an intern year. And that's because you're just you're new, you just finished medical school, and um, now you have a, a little bit, you have a lot more responsibility that you, than you did when you, had in, in, when you were in medical school. As a medical student, you were just basically in the back and you run everything by your resident. Um, but now uh, you are basically the attendance hand doing things. Okay, you run everything by the attending that you're dealing with, but you're still making decisions and you're discussing them with the, with the attendant and your senior resident as well. So the thing that got me, had me stressed was the fact that you had, um, it's medicine. You're dealing with people's livelihoods, you're dealing with people's lives. It's not, it's not like a game that you're playing. If you make a mistake and there's nothing, right? So there was this stress that I had because of that. And I would say um, intern year uh, was the most stressful, but at the same time, I'm not the kind of person that gets stressed easily, right? So the stress that I had wasn't necessarily like bad stress. There's good stress and there's bad stress. If it's too much stress, then it becomes bad stress. If it's just enough stress to make you know that you need to grow. That's good stress, that's called you stress. And that's basically the kind of stress that I had, especially as an intern. Like you, you learn the things that you don't know, you know the things that you don't know, and you look it up, you learn, you ask questions, you speak to your attendee, you run things by them, and or they guide you and they point certain things to you and they teach you certain things, and then you grow and you grow and you grow. And then you, because you know that um, that it's not a game and everything is serious. You take it serious, so you put a lot of effort into learning. The rotations that I enjoy the most, which is kind of surprising, are the ones where patients were even more sick. 
because I found it to be cerebral and I had more responsibility and I enjoyed that. So I enjoyed being in the ICU, I enjoyed working in inpatient services and in my program we had, uh, we did ICU our second year and then third year we didn't really do ICU, we didn't really do ICU, we just did inpatients where we're the seniors and then after that basically you uh, uh, once you once you once you're done with all of that stuff then you graduate and so on now because COVID hit I had to and I ended up being in the ICU again third year because we needed all hands on deck and I didn't mind it was fine for me but I enjoyed it I mean I enjoyed that I enjoyed being in the ICU again because I was able to, you know, it's like, it's, it's very cerebral. That's what I want to say. Very cerebral. And you have to think on your feet. And it was, it was nice, you know, you're looking, you're, like you're treating the patient, you're making sure that everything is okay. You're watching the vital signs, you're watching the patient state, you're doing a physical examination. Uh, you're doing labs, you're doing imaging, you're trying to make sure you catch things. It was it was cool. I liked it. Um, but all that said, there's still that underlying stress. It's not like you're just going through it and you're not stressed at all. Okay. So after residency, five months into uh, my fellowship. So I'm doing a urgent care fellowship at the moment. And so five months into my urgent care fellowship, do I feel as stressed as I was in residency? No. I, there is still some stress because you're still taking care of patients. You're still trying to make sure that you do everything right. You're still trying to make sure that, um, that you're able to catch the bad things that could happen to the patients okay so in order to understand that you, should, you need to understand that urgent care is an office between primary care office and the emergency room okay so you're not going there to do primary care stuff and then you're not going there with like really really serious conditions so it's kind of you have situations which are urgent which need to be checked out okay that need to be addressed at the moment but are not necessarily life-threatening um, but as an urgent care physician you're supposed to be able to treat those things and at the same time be able to catch those life-threatening conditions when a patient comes in looking fine but complaining of something so whatever complaints that they have should bring up these differentials in your head and you're supposed to run through them and make sure that it's not one of those life-threatening conditions because if they are they need to go to the emergency room right away so they can the lives can be saved sometimes it's very easy for example i had a patient okay patient came in um first of all patient looked sick looked at the vital signs heart rate through the roof talking about your short of breath okay ekg showed some ekg changes had to make sure I send them to the emergency room. So that's that's a pretty straightforward case. But then you have other cases where somebody might come in with abdominal pain. Okay. The way they're describing it, okay, they feel it's benign. But then you do your physical examination and you talk to them some more, you listen to some more history, and then you and then you kind of get this feeling in the back of your head. And one of your differentials is like sticking out. And you're like, nah. You need to go to emergency and get checked out. Because honestly, I mean, even if this, they find nothing, then that's fine. But if it's this thing that I'm thinking about, then at least you address it and you want to you, you want a safe side. Okay. So dealing with trying to make sure that you catch all the different things and also dealing with the fact that you're dealing with patients in general, that in and of itself is stressful. But I would say it's less, a lot less stressful than residency because when in residency you're in the ICU, you, know, you see really like critical patients, you're in the hospital and so on. Urgent care, at least from my experience, has not been as stressful. 
but there's still stress because you're dealing with patients. Now, money-wise, okay. So, in terms of money, as a resident, salaries range all the way from, as an intern, they range all the way from maybe like 30 something thousand all the way to like 60,000, depending on where you are. So places with lower standard of living usually have like lower salaries. Places with higher standards of living usually have higher salaries. So in New York City, usually the salary is a little bit higher. My residency was in New York, but the salary was a little bit on the low end. Okay. Now with that, I really, really had to learn how to really budget. I've always been decent with money and understanding finances and like knowing that I need to invest, knowing that you need to do this to grow your money. But I never really had to like sit down and truly budget so that I don't go over budget. Okay, but in residency, because the amount of money that I was making, I had to like really budget where my money was going. And I was able to budget in such a way that I was able to save money every every paycheck and the way i did that was uh i mean i can make a video i'm telling you guys specifically um how i created my budget but i was able to put the money aside every single time and what i did was only the paycheck hits my bank account the money is deducted and, and sent to my savings account and then i would spend i would spend the rest also during residency i purchased my first apartment with money that I made when I was in medical school. No, it wasn't doing anything crazy. <laughs> it was just investing. I invested money when I was in medical school and I was able to grow it and I used that as down payment to purchase my apartment in residency. And with that, I was able to, um, my mortgage, my maintenance, when you add everything together, I was paying less than I would have paid if I was, in, if, if I was renting. But I still needed to put down a decent amount of money in order to purchase this place. I was able to budget accordingly and make sure I didn't spend that much money. Um, so now that I've finished residency, how is it with the fellowship? With the fellowship, I'm still using my same tactics when it comes to budgeting. But like I said, if you guys want me to go into a video on how to budget, just let me know and I will for sure, okay? Um, I'm still using the same budget that I used when I was in residency, but I've increased the budget for a lot of the things that I was spending money on, like groceries. I increased the money that I spent on groceries, of course, because I'm no longer a resident, and I have a little bit more money available to me. I mean, it's not full doctor's salary, but it's still a little bit more money than it was when I was making in, uh, in residency. So I increased that. I also increased the amount of money that goes into my savings automatically. And I also increased the money that I used to pay down my, my credit cards and I started paying off my student loans as well. And I have a hefty amount of student loans which I had to pay off. Um, so definitely better, things are better my financially wise, but the lessons that I learned from managing money when I was a resident makes things so much easier now. These are the kind of things that you will deal with and you will be exposed to and deal with when you finish residency. You see either your stress level goes higher or your stress level goes lower. I spend a lot of time thinking about the profession that I wanted to go into within medicine. Like what specialty I wanted to enter into. And I came up with what I felt I would enjoy and what I felt would not make me miserable. Because if you think about it, like they, some of the older doctors, when you speak to them, they sound miserable because they will be big. Um, for whatever reason, healthcare, this, healthcare, that, for whatever reason, like I didn't want that to be, to be my life. So I spent a little bit more time trying to make sure I figured out exactly which direction I wanted to go. And I figured out urgent care was the, the, the route for me. Okay, so this, so taking that time towards the end of residency, or while you're in residence, trying to figure out way, which direction you're gonna go will make life bearable for you or um, uh, in a good, good way or a bad way. Now, money-wise, when you finish residency, whether you do fellowship or you become an attendant directly, the amount of money that you're gonna make go up or will go up. Now, in some specialties, you make a lot more money, 
But it's my belief that you have to balance the level of stress or the level of happiness with the amount of money that you're going to be making. Life is not all about money. Your money, money helps you get certain things, but life is not all about money. Okay, and you shouldn't lose sight of the reason why you decided to become a doctor. But anyway, towards the end, it became a little bit of a rant, but I hope that uh, you guys benefited or got a little something from this video. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Otasafu asante. Out.